So Hillary Clinton did an interview with the Financial Times and uh, how do I describe this interview? It's the most fawning interview that you've heard in a long time. Obviously, this author is very pro-Hillary Clinton. Um, it's, it, it, it's quite cloying, if you will, to read it. I do, I do recommend you read it. I'll post it on my locals because it's kind of funny how, how he, he just sucks up the whole time. He talks about how he wants to take down the politician mask of Hillary Clinton, and yet he obviously doesn't. There's nothing, there's nothing revealed in this interview except something unintentionally. So let's read through this together. First of all, um, when his name is Edward Luce, by the way, the author or the reporter, the journalist, whatever he wants to call himself, who wrote this piece. He writes, Clinton has described herself as the most investigated innocent person in America. And I thought, isn't that exactly what a crook would say? <laughs> the most investigated innocent person in America. This, this woman has lived a political life and gotten away with more than maybe anybody since Ted Kennedy. I cannot think of a politician who has done more wrong, committed more egregious law-breaking activities, engaged in blatant corruption, and just gotten away with it than Hillary Clinton. And yet she has the audacity to describe herself as the most investigated innocent person in America. She is actually the Wicked Witch of the West. She, that literally the Wicked Witch of the West. And this is what she said about, she was asked by, about Roe v. Wade. This is what she said about Margaret Atwood. Now, Margaret Atwood is the author of The Handmaid's Tale. And you know how the left is sending all those radical leftist abortion groupies into Catholic churches dressed like The Handmaid's Tale? This dystopian novel. It was written by Margaret Atwood that um, poses this idea, or, or the premise, I should say, of the book is that, um, well, she portrays it as Republicans, Christians, if you will, have forced women, subjugated women, and forced them just to bear children um, essentially sex slaves. This is what this is what um, Hillary Clinton said about it. She was asked by the uh, by Edward Luce. She said he he said, "What is the Christian rights endgame?" I asked. Presumably, they would not be able to create the theological dystopia depicted in Margaret Atwood's 1985 novel, *The Handmaid's Tale*. My question, he says, triggers a passionate response from Hillary Clinton. "Quote: The level of insidious rulemaking to further oppress women." almost knows no end, Clinton says. You look at this and how could you not but think that Margaret Atwood was a prophet? She's not just a brilliant writer. She was a prophet. Oh, oh, I cringe even hearing her words in, in written form. This woman is so disgusting. This is why Repub not just Republicans, but the left rejected her in 2016 too. She was asked whether she would run again in 2024. And this is what she said. No, Hillary said, out of the question. First of all, I expect Biden to run. He certainly intends to run. It would be very disruptive to challenge that. And then she gives no second of all. She just gives a first of all. She does, however, say that in this, in this interview that she thinks Trump will want to run again. She says, quote, I think if he can, he's going to run again. Follow the money with Trump. He's raised about 130 million sitting in his bank account that he used to travel around to fund organizing against elections. I don't know who will challenge him in the Republican primary. Interesting, very interesting. Um, she calls losing in 2016 a traumatic event. But he, here's what's very interesting. So she, she was asked about 2016 and her loss to Trump. And she says not only was it traumatizing, she actually blames voter fraud. We're told, we're told by the left that if we question the integrity of the 2020 election, if we so much as even whisper an insinuation about voter fraud, that we're inciting an election, that we're taking, we're, we're propagating the so-called big lie. And yet Hillary Clinton blames voter fraud for why she lost in 2016. And they don't say a word about it. It's bananas, the double standard here. Um, this is what she says, or the, I, I guess Edward asks her. He says, I ask whether things would have turned out differently had Clinton not Trump won in 2016. Her answer makes it clear that she thinks the January 6th, 2021 storming of Capitol Hill to stop Joe Biden's certification would simply have happened four years earlier. This is what she says. Literally within hours of the polls closing in 2016, we had so much evidence pouring in about voters being turned away in Milwaukee and not being able to vote in Detroit, she replies. These states were run by Republicans, so there was no way to find out the truth about any of them. I read this and I was like, are you kidding? This is actually the flip side. If you just, if you just replace Trump saying Democrats and leftists in blue states with Hillary saying Republicans in red states, it's the same thing. Allegations of voter fraud. And Hillary has absolutely no evidence for this. 
And yet it's okay with the left. It's okay with the mainstream media. Adam Schiff, oh my goodness, he certainly doesn't care about this. He certainly would never accuse Hillary Clinton of inciting an insurrection here. 